five things nobody tells you about teaching. In my case, since I was a child, I kind of knew what I wanted to do because when I was younger, I used to have a blackboard and we had, and we had a typewriter uh, that belonged to my family. So with my stuffed toys, I would pretend I was a teacher and the typewriter I would uh, type exercises and exams and stuff like that. I was a bit of a weirdo, but uh, I really enjoyed all that. And I have to say that I had really good teachers in primary school. I looked up to them. So that really helped, or that, that really stayed in my head while I grew up. So when I reached fifth year, I started digging into what options I had and I decided to become a teacher. Now, there are things that nobody tells you when you become a teacher and that's what we're going to discuss today. Number one, it is exhausting. I mean, it is so tiring. It takes up so much energy. Mentally, it's really hard. Now, what happens with teaching is that it's not like in the movies, you know, like you see uh, the teacher who is really cool and the students who obey and all that. It's not like that. You have to be constantly innovating and trying to find the best option for the students because people are different and not everybody uh, adapts to one method or one exercise etc so it's really exhausting it takes up so much time and so much energy that takes me to number two extra work outside uh, working hours now that is something that you don't see now, you don't see because it's not what we do at work. I mean, if I have four hours of work, it means that I would need at least about three hours to prepare those classes. Now, I've had situations where people have said to me, oh, so you, you've worked four hours today, such an easy job. Yeah, but nobody sees that on Saturdays and Sundays, I dedicate my free time to prepare the work for the following day. And nobody sees that. And when people say, oh, you have so much holidays. Yeah, you don't see that while you are in your weekend break, I am not. I totally understand because when you're not in the field, you don't see those things. But just to see, it's not as easy because we take our free time in order to find new materials, new solutions, new methods, etc. Number three is self-criticism. We're constantly thinking how to improve uh, a lesson, how to innovate, how, how to improve ourselves as, as teachers. We're not happy ever with the way we teach or the way we perform. We always want to improve. And for example, in my case, I am it's not that I don't take criticism well, it's just that I want, I, I, I need opinions in order to know if I do things well or not. But it's true that if I receive a bad comment, I am really, I'm too hard on myself. I really think that I'm not doing everything right, I need to... No, sometimes you need that in order to improve. But it's really hard because, and it happens, I think it happens in every job. When you receive a bad comment, you don't realize or you, you forget about all the good things that you've done so far. And that's really hard and that happens a lot in teaching. You want to, you want to improve, you want to go a step farther and you want to, to, to do the best for your students. Now, number four, <laughs> this is a bit, controversial i think it's it's the incompetence in the field now what do i mean by this remember that teacher in the school who would say to you you know what that happened to me you know what today i don't feel like teaching just do a bit of homework that you had there i had that teacher 
and it makes me feel really angry because somebody else could do that job a thousand times better than that person and that person is occupying a position that somebody else could perform better so it happens a lot of teachers think that it's a comfortable job and once they um once they're in the field for a few years they kind of relax now it doesn't happen to everybody i just want to say that it happens more than we would like when other people with more capacity or more skills could take that place and then number five is never stop learning now so i came across a post on i think it was pinterest or myspace this shows how old i am when i'm talking about myspace i remember seeing this post where it says in order to be a teacher you never stop learning and that's so true i mean you're you're always looking for new techniques new ways of uh, improving your your lesson and it's something that a teacher good teacher is never happy with the final result and that's why we need to constantly learning i i still take courses every now and then because course like online courses can be really good in order to share ideas with other teachers or uh, in order to share resources and, and that's something that I kind of knew, like I always knew that you always have to be on the move, but <laughs> it's now when I realized, especially now with online teaching and remote learning, where this is really important, looking for new ideas, looking for new resources, um, always in order to, uh, to help the student. So these are my five things that nobody told me about teaching. Do I regret taking this path? It depends on the day you ask me. There are days where I think I can't, it's exhausting, but there are days where I am so happy. I, I am helping people and that is something that you don't think when you take so many extra hours to do the job or to, you know, to find new things or to study more because it's a very rewarding job and I am really, I feel lucky that I can do it. So tell me what you think. If you're a teacher, do you feel like this? Were you aware of these five points that I mentioned before? What's your opinion about all this? I'd like to hear and I'll see you soon.